What is Prometheus? You probably all know this. Prometheus is more than just a time series database. It's a complete monitoring system. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's so popular. It includes you know, query language. Um, it includes exporters and adapters and client libraries for all the most popular um, languages. In fact, most languages, in fact. The history of Prometheus is, is not that long. Um, I think it first came out in uh, 2013, or I think. Um, I only got involved in the last kind of two years. In pre-0.9, it had a really simple time series database. Uh, it maxed out at about 50,000 samples a second. If you shut it down, you lost samples. It had no kind of crash recovery or anything like this. Heavily used things like LevelDB to store the uh, label index. In 0.9, Bjorn, one of the core Prometheus developers, uh, built a new time series backend for it. Um, again, like the Metrics Tank um, project, heavily inspired by the Griller uh, paper. With this, we managed to get to you know, almost a million samples a second. We had some limitations in the architecture, so you could really only have about 10 million time series. With the latest release of Prometheus in 2.0, Fabian and, um, at CoreOS had a, like, a brand new time series database implementation, very similar to the uh, log-structured merge tree approach of Influx. Um, in this implementation, we can do millions. You know, depending on your hardware, we've measured two, three million samples a second. We're kind of not really focused on samples a seconds anymore because you know, it's so high. Um, what we did focus on with this new release is uh, dealing with series churn. So in highly dynamic environments, uh, say Kubernetes, we see lots of pods coming and going, and every time a pod disappears and a new one comes up, you get thousands of new time series. Okay, and if you're doing things like continuous deployment, where you're deploying every single PR you merge into master into your staging environment, you can be redeploying your services tens, hundreds of times a day. Um, Prometheus 1.0 struggled with that kind of workload because you would easily hit 10 million time series very quickly. With Prometheus 2.0, we rotate out the chunks, well, they call them blocks now, we rotate out the blocks every two hours. And so there's a, a cap on the cardinality expansion. And this makes it really good for Kubernetes, basically. Brand new storage engine, significantly improved performance. And I just wanted to thank Fabian, Brian, and Gotham, who did most of the work on Prometheus 2.0. Fingers crossed Brian's actually watching the live stream, so if he is, hi Brian. Uh, I won't do an Irish accent. So the graphs from Prometheus 2.0 look fantastic. The, the bottom ones are Prometheus 2.0 and the top ones are Prometheus 1.5, I think. And this is showing CPU load under a fixed uh, workload. And so you can just tell like it's massively lower. We're about 3x reduction in CPU usage, uh, 2x reduction in uh, disk space because the compression just got better and more efficient. But the real winner here is 100x reduction in I.O. We're not, this comes from getting rid of this checkpoint process and using a write-ahead log to get crash recovery. And so that's just, in a cloud-native environment, that makes a huge difference. I wanted to include a, a slide on staleness handling, even though, I'll be honest, I don't fully admit to understanding it. Um, this was one of the most requested features, and it's how we deal with time series that have gone away. So previously, a query into Prometheus would include all time series that, well, here you go, it says it on the slide, would include all time series that have had a value in the last five minutes. So if you built an alert on the presence or absence of a time series, like saying, you know, my API server time series disappears, then please alert me, it would take you five minutes for that alert to come through. In Prometheus 2.0, we recognize, because we do our own service discovery and our own scraping, we can recognize when a time series has disappeared. You know, and we know about it, and we can propagate that effectively immediately. So your alerts will get much quicker and much easier to write. I wanted to give a quick shout out to the Prometheus community. Raj gave some updated stats, but our community is absolutely exploding. We've, um, what does it say here? We've increased more than 5x in the last year in terms of usage. We've also, Raj also said, we have GitHub stars. If we were a VC-backed project, we would be like, you know, going through the roof. And finally, PromCon at our conference, um, we had 2x the, uh, well, more than 2x the attendees in 2017. We're running it again in Munich this year. The dates have been agreed, maybe, I think. So they're 9th and 10th of August. Um, the site will be going up, the CFP will be going out really shortly. I hope you don't mind me plugging another conference at this one. Final plug, Brian, who can't be here, has written a book on Prometheus called Prometheus Up and Running. I've seen an early draft, it's really good. Um, so I would highly recommend when this comes out, you know, you find a way of getting a copy of it. Thank you very much.